The scent and smoke and sweat are nauseating at three in the morning. So wrote Ian Fleming in the opening sentence of his first novel, Casino Royale. Although the setting was an upmarket gambling den, when Fleming bashed out these words on his Triumph typewriter in 1952, he was thinking of the Second World War, which had finished only seven years earlier. He was then Commander Fleming, Chief of Staff to the Director of Naval Intelligence, and knew a thing or two about all-night stints in military operations rooms. Casino Royale was all about Fleming transferring his memories of military risk-taking to the roulette wheel. What you are about to listen to here is Julian Whippy's oral history of a more modern military adventure. Study of the Iraq War, which began in 2003, is today clouded with strongly held opinions about the national leadership of the era and suspicion of true geopolitical agendas. Burning Horizon concerns itself only with the March to April invasion phase from a UK military perspective, it also evokes exactly that unglamorous, Fleming-esque atmosphere of stale socks, cigarettes, perspiration and anxiety associated with military endeavour. On a cautionary note, this volume is not about the politics of the decision to invade Iraq, nor about the subsequent occupation. Using lessons from the administration of Germany and Japan in 1945, it had been explained to British military personnel that a Coalition Provisional Authority, CPA, would be established as soon as the invasion phase was over. Its purpose, with the US-led Office for Reconstruction and Humanitarian Assistance, ORHA, was to act as a caretaker administration in Baghdad until a democratically elected government was in place. The CPA slash ORHA would employ Iraqis and retrain their institutions, such as the police and the army, to swiftly put the country back on its feet. Thus, those taking part did so in good faith. The business of donning a military cloak and shouldering a weapon requires a literal and metaphorical contract. The latter involves the state undertaking to pay, clothe, equip and feed you and see you will come to no harm, and if you do, to mend you for as long as it takes. In return, your country can send you where it wishes, on whatever duties, that it has set out in justification to its people and the wider world. In effect, by serving your country, you are signing a blank cheque of unlimited service that might result in your death. Those who went to Iraq, or the wider theatre, did so having discussed the matter with their consciences, their families, their commanders and their mates. No one foresaw a lingering presence in the region, least of all Her Majesty's government. Due to the coalition's failure to re-employ the disbanded local army and police forces, tens of thousands of angry, unemployed young men, guided by outside actors with their own agendas, took to the streets that summer and fermented an insurgency.